Okay guys, so in this video I'm gonna guide you through the second pull request. What I wanna do is a quick review of what you already done, there is the first pull request. Uh, remember that I was referring uh, this repository from Twindle as the original repo? Well, you can call it that way or you can also call it upstream. Upstream is meant from the repository that you clone the information from. What we did uh, yesterday so you guys already did a fork. So you take all the data, all the info from the upstream uh, repository to your repository on GitHub. And you also made a pull request. So you push all your changes from your GitHub repo, from your account to the Twindle account. And what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to clone the repo from GitHub. So we're going to download all the information that is in our GitHub account to our local machine. And we're also going to do some changes and that is going to be the push. Okay, so we already learned how to do this and today we're going to do this uh, on the command line. And you also are going to learn how to pull the information from the upstream, that is the Twindle repository, to our local machine. Well, we're going to clone the repository to our machines. So go to your GitHub account and then go to the Twindle repo, uh, the one that you forked from the Twindle-co account. So once you are in your repo, then hit the green button that says code. And then if you type in this file button, you're going to just get the URL copy. Then you have to open your command line or your terminal or if you're in Windows it's going to be called command prompt. Make sure that you have a uh, git install. You can consult it this way. If you don't have it installed you can just uh, go to the internet and download git. And once you have it installed uh, you can clone your repo. So first make sure that you are in the directory you want to clone this repository. If you want to know where you are, you can do this uh, command. If you want to list uh, all the directories that are there, uh, you can use ls and you can move through directories with cd. Like in my case, I want to clone it inside development in, and if I wanted to clone it in another folder inside, I just can keep going and, and going whatever uh, folder I want to do. But I just want to do it inside development. So once I'm in the directory, I want to clone this repo. I'm just going to type git clone and then I'm going to paste uh, the URL. Remember this folder is named Twindle, right? And you can see the URL is ending in twindle.git. If you want to, you can give it a name to your folder. You can put it my repo. I'm just going to leave this in blank. This name is optional. If you don't put a name, it's going to just clone it with the same name of the folder that, that is in here. So I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to display a message that is uh, downloading everything. And if I do list, I'm going to see the folder. So I'm just going to go inside the folder. I'm going to list again and you're going to see that I have the same files that I have in my repo. Uh, git ignore is uh, not visible, but if I want to see it, I just can do ls-la. If you want to, you can work also in the terminal. You can create a file with a touch or if you're in Windows, you can do echo something. And then if I'm not mistaken, it's like this and then the name of the file. But if you want to work, that you will probably do uh, when working at text editor like VS Code, uh, where you can type more code and not just create in one file, you just can go there uh, from the command line. You type code and space dot. Gonna open VS Code as long as you have it installed. So if you type this and code is not open, then it's because you don't have the configuration and you can just fix it this way. Go to the view option and then command palette and do and type shell and then click to shell command install code. So after you do this, close VS Code and you will be able to access uh, to VS Code by the command line just typing code and space dot. I'm here right now and in here, I can also 
open the terminal in this option so just uh, click in terminal and new terminal and you are gonna see that you can type also in here the same commands so if you want to you can create uh, as many windows you want like for example if you want to use uh, one window to only do your git commands and you want to use another one to run your program it's okay uh, for this purpose I think I'm just gonna use one okay so first I'm gonna pull all the changes so as I see my branch is again is behind by 179 commits uh, you can see that all my uh, changes on, are from day today and two days ago while the <laughs> the Twindle uh, repository the latest uh, modification was three hours ago I'm gonna pull all the changes we saw how to do it by reverse pull request on github uh, we're gonna do it by the command line now the first thing that we have to do is consult if we are attached to any other remote repository with with this command if you type git remote uh, dash b you're gonna see in my case I see my user you're gonna see that you are only uh, linked to to this rep. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, with this command git remote add and we're gonna name it. You can put any name in here. I'm gonna name it AppStream because what I'm gonna do is to add uh, the Twindle dash co repository. So I can pull all the information from there. So remember we already saw what upstream means. So then we're going to add the twindle-co uh, repo name. We're going to do it this way. You go to the twindle and we're going to copy this. We're going to paste it and that's it. So we're going to again consult if we are linked to another remote repository. We see uh, that the origin is uh, our repo because I can see my, my username and the upstream is the twindle dash co right so it's the same uh, directory is the same name of the repo but the owner is uh, different right so now what we want to do is pull the changes from um, from upstream right so we're gonna use this command I know that probably it looks like too much but I'm gonna leave this this command uh, on the description so we're using this name because we name it upstream okay so it finished and but as we see here it says from github uh, twindle-co and is uh, all the information went to upstream main so we use git fetch to download uh, all the changes from the remote repository from the upstream one so in our case, uh, remember that we are only working in the main branch. So what we're going to do now is to merge. Where are we going to merge? We already have all, all the changes in the main branch from the upstream repository. And we want to merge it to our origin repository. So we're just going to do git merge. And then we're going to call the upstream. Or if you name it otherwise, then put the name that you chose and we're gonna do main so we're gonna merge this to here and as you see uh, I think it don't load um, many things <laughs> you can see all the the files that change up and we also see that some files incremented here the second pull request was um, to do some changes in your file but using your local machine so I know that this was many commands but do it at your pace uh, do it slowly if you need to pause the video and then look for some concepts do it uh, I would recommend you to take your time it's better that you can understand and not just type uh, because you want to finish this process well I'm gonna look for my <laughs> for my name I think this way is gonna be easy actually I'm gonna rename it to follow this standard <laughs> okay it looks like deleted <laughs> but it only changed the name and well the second pull request was to do any change I'm just gonna uh, copy paste uh, the information that I had in here and I'm gonna paste it and yeah 
Okay, so that's my change. Uh, another good practice to do, in this case, I only change one file and I can see it in here. But in, when you already start coding, you will probably gonna modify two or three files at the time. A good practice is first to consult with Git status. Uh, well, I'm gonna see that I deleted, actually rename it, but it's gonna appear like I delete a file. And it's good we, we did this because it's deleted from your local machine, but it's not deleted from your repository and neither is deleted from the Twinder repository. If you want to delete a file, be careful with this. If you want to delete a file on the repository, you have to do git rm and then the name of the file. And be careful also because if you click tab, it's going to complete with the files that are currently on your local machine. So we don't want to delete this. Uh, most of the time you're going to have to type it. Uh, other thing that you can do is just copy the name of the file so you don't make any mistakes. Uh, just remove it. It's going to appear this special. Let's remove it. And then uh, we're going to add the other file that I edited. In my case, it's my name. After doing the add, you do get a status again. Uh, if you want to, if you have many files to add, you can actually do this, but again, I won't recommend it and I will tell you why. Because when you start coding, uh, you're probably going to need, okay, two or three files, but you're going to edit them because of different reasons. So let's suppose that you're doing feature A in one file and feature B in two files. If you add uh, the three of them, you're gonna push all the information with only one commit. It's gonna be a little bit messy. Also, if you wanna go back because you made a mistake of one feature, it's gonna go back and and do the changes for the three files. So it's it's better to separate. Uh, maybe not every file, but for changes. You know, if you edited uh, ten files and three are for a feature A, then add these three files and commit them and then add the other rest and commit them. In this case, again, you're gonna only add one file. After adding, you'll have to do git commit dash m to, to do a message uh, with your changes. Okay, so this is my commit message. If I do git status again, it's not gonna appear in red and it's not gonna appear in green either. It's going to be like your branch is ahead by, well, many commits. Well, why 180? Because if you remember, my branch was already behind by 179. So plus the one commit that I'm doing by adding my file is 180. You know, you do git add and then you do git commit dash m and your message here. And then what you have to do is git push. So with push, you are forcing all your files go to your repo. And as you see, the message in here, it says to and the URL. I see my user here and you can see that you are uh, going from main to main. This is the name of the branch where we're not going to cover that yet. You can do git status again. <laughs> I only recommend it to do git status before adding and after it just to check, you don't need to do git status every time. But if you are a little bit afraid or if you are getting familiar with it, then you can do it. Okay, so it says your branch is up to date with origin main. Remember last time we saw uh, upstream, right? Okay, so we go to GitHub again. Uh, it says 179, I'm just gonna update. We have our changes. We can see three hours ago this file we didn't modify and this was two minutes ago and this was my commit message. Okay, so we already understand what is upstream, what is origin and how to clone the repository to our local machine. We learned uh, the commands to modify a file, to add them and to push them to our repo. And the, this step we already know it, that is to make a pull request. Okay, so this is going to be your second pull request. Uh, I'm gonna create pull request. So yeah, probably this video was a little bit longer, but I just wanna make sure that you guys understand how everything works. That's it guys, that's the video for today. 